changing out the alternator on a 2005 Hyundai Tucson. Some of our, our warning signs were some lights coming on on the dash. Um, I think they kind of spell a code out, so we took it in to AutoZone, had them run a diagnostic, and it definitely looks like the alternator. So I went ahead and ordered one, but then like the day I ordered it that night, um, we were driving the car along and all of a sudden like things started going dim, like the clock, the dash lights, and then our headlights went out. Um, and then the car pretty much died, had to, had to tow it home. So that pretty much spelled out that it was definitely the alternator. Um, so here we are, we're gonna change that sucker out. The first problem we ever saw, these two lights, the brake and the battery light were coming on. Um, so that was sort of our warning sign. I didn't know what that was, looked it up. Turns out it's more serious than a glitching panel. It's actually showing me that my alternator is probably bad. Um, later, these lights over here came on together while we were driving. It's the ABS brake and the ESP off. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is jack the car up so we can get that tire off. Front um, passenger side tire. We want the jack to go right here on this, this ridged part. I know it seems kind of weird because it's thin, but we just want the, the jack to come up on that. Have a jack stand ready so we can have the car set down on that. All right, so our goal is to lift the car up high enough that we can get a little free play under the tire. But a good thing to do first, loosen your lug nuts before you get the car off the ground. Okay, and so like I said, while the, there's still weight on the tire, we're just gonna use the tire iron that, that's in the back of the car, right where the spare tire is. Your Hyundai Tucson should have the jack that comes with it. It's by the spare tire in the back. And that one's gonna give us enough to get this off the ground. Don't put your jack right there. There's like some bolts there that are gonna make it, it won't sit flat. Okay, so I've got couple of jack stands. I also put my floor jack under the front just to triple, triple back up. All right, so I'm about to remove the tire. All right, my last thing, put a wheel chalk behind one of your back tires, or both if you want. Okay, so once we've got the tire off, this is what you see in here. First thing we're gonna have to remove is this, this plastic guard right there. The 10 millimeter bolt there. Round up and around, there's three more. Okay, real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the negative terminal of the battery. That's a 10 millimeter. Okay, so our next step is to, to release tension on the, the tensioner pulley so that we can get the belt off of the alternator. So there's the alternator right there. That's the alternator pulley, and there's the belt on it. And the belt, the bottom part of the belt goes right up to, that's the tensioner pulley right there. And we're just gonna put the drive of our ratchet in that square right there. And we're just gonna crank down and pull just to, to loosen the tension. And once you get your ratchet in there, you're gonna need to pull with your right arm and and get the belt off an alternator with your left. So, all right, so now I've got the handle way up high, so I have some leverage. It's not as hard as I thought it would be. Do that, and I should. All right, so the pulley is now off. I'll just Okay, so here's a top view from inside the engine compartment. Okay, next is to unhook wires. There's three different things you're gonna have to unhook. Two of them are actually powered. I think going in and out of the alternator. And one of them is just like a wire, wire harness. We'll actually do that one first. We'll go up under. Um, right here, there's just a little clip that, that harnesses this wire right there. Um, so mine's already undone, but you'll have to pull that clip out of yours. So here's my new alternator, which I ordered from rockauto.com. And um, just to show you what you're gonna be working with, so this is where that the wire harness thing plugs in. I don't even know how necessary that is because mine's been broken. But um, then there's a plug there, and then there's this. Well, this one will be screwed on with a boot over it. So there's the plug right there. Well, I just don't have any hand left. It's 
So I finally decided that I need more room for my arm to get in here. So I took out this bolt. I think that's the power steering line, fluid line. Um, and that's just a bolt that sort of anchors it. So I pulled that out so I could push the power steering line out of my way. So I could get my hand back in here because it's just barely enough room. Um, once I could get my right arm through, through here, and then um, left, left hand up through here, then I can kind of get both fingers on the plug and use my left hand or my left index finger to push the button on the back. And then my right hand just to jiggle it free. It's really hard. It's not easy. Well, that plug is out. There's that little like lever that that's what you have to push in. Finally <laughs> found the perfect place to hang your light. Half inch socket, 13 millimeter fits too, but half inch seems to fit a little tighter. I'm actually having a really hard time getting to my ratchet on that second wire nut back there. Um, and so I think I might be able to, when I pull the alternator out, I might be able to reach it better. So I might try unbolting the alternator first and kind of sliding it out, we'll see. Uh, so what I'm doing, two main bolts that hold the alternator in, um, and the lower one is right here. And I just got 9 16 socket, uh, and I just put my ratchet on there, and it's really tight, so I really wanted to use my torque wrench that I have has a really long handle on it so I can get lots of leverage. Um, and so I'm just going straight down through kind of a wishbone shape to the out to the CV joint and everything. I'm just going through there and I was able to get enough torque to break that one loose. The top bolt to the alternator is right there. Of course that one's a 12 millimeter fit down in there so I'm gonna have to use a wrench. At least I have a ratcheting box and wrench. Got it. That bolt's that long. And it goes there. Okay, we actually have it lifted out. All right. I might actually first turn it in such a way that I can get that one wire. Okay, so I'm still having a hard time getting to that one electrical nut on the back side of the alternator. So now I'm going to try to actually pull the alternator out. Again, like I'm finding this hole just to be too small to get it through. Things getting in the way is this bracket right here that, um, like again, I think that's um, power steering line and it's just a bracket that holds, holds it into there. And there's that 10 millimeter bolt right there and if we pull that out we can get this bracket out of our way. So we got that bracket off. Uh, one of the reasons I think this alternator went bad is there's just stuff all over it, which I think is actually a power steering fluid. Pull that guy out. From the top of the engine now, with the alternator rotated around, I can see that nut right there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the camera on it while I undo it, so... This is the only way I was able to get the right kind of torque on it, and I don't know, like... If you're doing this exactly like me, you might not have rotated it the same way. So just however you can get a, a socket on that thing. I'm thinking, oh, let's just wiggle this guy out of here. The axle off and stuff because it's just a puzzle piece, a 3D puzzle piece. There, yes. All right, so I don't know if you could see that, but I pointed the pulley out. I pointed the pulley out through this. There we go. If you can just point the pulley over the axle, then it comes out of the wheel well. And you can tell this alternator is just covered in grease, which I think may be dripping from the power steering fluid. I'll, I'll take a note of this. That wire post right there was a 12 millimeter on the old one. 
and it's a half inch on the new one. All right, so we are ready to install our new alternator. Um, take this carriage bolt from your old one. Mine was pretty grimed up, so I just sprayed some <clears throat> degreaser on the bolts and the nuts. And you're just gonna slide that one right through there. We'll go ahead and just lightly screw on that nut. I'm not gonna tighten it down or anything, but we just want that to be ready to slide down in that little carriage arm inside there. So we're just gonna try to reverse how we took out the other one um, with the plastic armature on the back side toward the inside of the engine and just go in like this way. Um, so your pulley's facing you before we get it up in there. Go ahead and take this nut off because that's gonna have to go over the top of the, the wire once we slide it down on there. And I'm gonna try to position this first where I can really get to that wire and I'm gonna screw the wire down on. I'm gonna try to tighten that nut real good before I situate the alternator in and tighten down the bolts that hold it in. Get with the puzzle. I think that's gonna help me get that wire on that post. See, this is from top, that side of it, and that's where the wire comes down. I'm gonna probably have to just blindly feel around to get it on the post. And right there, that guy needs to go on that post. Okay, I finally got the wire on the post. So, right there, this is the boot. Um, and then I just had to reach in with my left hand and like you can't see anything you just have to feel it onto the post you have to get it though so it slides in in the groove part here but now i just need to get the nut on and tighten it down and then it needs to slide all the way down so it makes contact okay so i'm just gonna actually show you on the old alternator here um see how this plastic housing has grooves here and there on the sides so basically we're trying to slide that wire on this post and get it to touch flat down on that metal right there. It needs to make a good contact and then tighten this nut good and snug. The tricky part though is gonna get that, have, have the wire go in that groove there because I, I don't have the alternator set where it needs to go yet. Because then after I get that on, then I'm gonna set it in where it needs to go and then tighten them. Okay, so what I did is I just, um, I reached in and um, tightened, or just thumb, thumb screwed the nut on just so that the wire can't come off the post while we move it around. Um, then I'm gonna situate the alternator the way it's supposed to go and then tighten it. Okay, here's another view from down through the wheel well. Um, so see, I position the alternator so the pulley's facing out to me now. And what that did was that rotated the, the post there in such a way that the wire's in the correct place now. So now when I tighten the nut, tighten it right down to where it needs to be. I was able to get it, I think, sufficiently tight. I'm, from here, it looks like it's making contact. So I'm happy with that. Now there's a boot that goes over it. Just need to make sure that covers it. it probably keeps out moisture. Okay, next step, I'm just showing you on the old alternator. Let's put this plug in. Remember, this part's facing toward the engine. The pulley is facing out toward where the tire would be. And so the clip part of this plug goes toward the engine. You might just have to feel around because it's all on the back. There's the right side of the alternator. Just need to sit in that little U there. It's like a cradle for that bolt. I'm just gonna lift it up and set it in there. Just reaching down blindly and trying to reach in there and plug that. And it's not easy, but you gotta feel around until you get it. Okay, I finally got it. Um, there's not much room for that plug down there, so you actually have to kind of palm the alternator, lift it up as far as it'll go as you're plugging. I'll show you on the old one. Okay, so here's actually how it's sitting in the car. And then so around there like that, that's where we're trying to plug it. And so actually like what I did was I just took my hand and sort of palmed it and then lifted it this way. At the same time, I held the plug with these fingers and pushed it in because behind the plug, there's not, if this, the alternator's sitting like that, there's not gonna be enough room for the plugs. Lift, snap it in. And that also lines up this hole where that bolt's gonna go. Right there, 
we're gonna let we're gonna line up those holes and stick that bolt in tighten it and that one so reaching from behind the axle and everything I reached up through and held with my left hand and then screwed this bolt in with my right hand because you want to you have to kind of hold the alternator up against that arm and that bracket right there toward you and then line up the holes because you want to make real sure you don't strip out that bolt right there and it, you should be able to thumb tighten it all the way in or almost all the way in because those, it's really highly machined threads in there and that will help you know you're not cross threading it okay so i was only able to find torque specs for 06 and newer tucson's i'm just going to go ahead and assume it's the same for the 2005 so that right there is the pivot bolt um, and it says 14 to 18 foot pounds get that set on our torque wrench all right and it's a 9 16 I haven't got the top or the bottom one quite tightened yet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up here and tighten the top one just because the whole thing's a little loose and wobbly. Um, remember, this one's a 12 millimeter, and you have a really tight space right here to get in. And so, if you have these box in ratchet wrenches, man, they're so nice. I felt that one click. There we go. 14 to 16 on the lower one and 11 to 16 foot pounds on this top one. You know what? I don't even think I can get my torque wrench in there because I have to have an adapter on my drives to get it down to fit. So I might just kind of tighten that one down and just hope it's close. <laughs> the next step is to get the belt back on. So remember, we just popped our the drive on our ratchet into, into this. Pull that down. It's not too hard. Just like that. Swing that down till you get enough slack and then there we go let off okay now we're just gonna put that bracket back on that goes right here um, it's just like a mounting bracket where you can hook the power steering tube on to um, and that's a 10 millimeter so first we're gonna put the bolt down in the bottom next we're gonna put this little plastic guard back on. Remember it's three, well actually it's supposed to be four. I only have bolts that go on there. They're all 10 millimeter. All right, and I can't remember if I mentioned it in the video. I took off the engine cover just so I could get better access to the side over here. And that's just four bolts that are 10 millimeter super easy just slide that back on tighten those guys down good time to go ahead and put the battery post back on and if you're like me you your car died because the alternator crapped out on you and you had to use up every last bit of juice in your battery to get back home somehow um, in which case your battery is going to need to be jump um, some people say charge it uh, how to do that it's not gonna crank right up all right now let's just get our tire back <laughs> you want to park the cars next to each other both off and um, first we're going to attach the positive jumper cable to the dead car then positive to the live car then the negative to the live car the negative post and then the other end of the negative on the dead car just attach it to the frame somewhere an unparted part of the frame and then we're going to start the live car and let it sit for five minutes and try to start the day. In moment of truth, the car started right up. I'm gonna let it run for a while to really charge that battery up. Now disconnect your battery cables in the opposite order. And you hear how loud that car is? That's our next DIY video.